If you say somebody got special needs, then why would you be watching them and holding them accountable like everybody else? The question is that, yo, whenever he starts to freaking make sense like that. Yo, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome to the channel. Subscribe. Yeah, if you feel like it, if you enjoy the content, hopefully I earned your subscription. Yeah. Um, Patrick CC. Why Hollywood wants Cat Williams dead? So obviously it's probably it, it, most of it is from what the, the podcast that he did um earlier in the in the in the year. Yeah, that's he predicted a lot of stuff. Uh, some uh, some of it have came true. That Diddy situation probably was the biggest one. And um, let's see what um Patrick CC is gonna do gonna say about this. Like yeah, let's get this. <laughs> Cat Williams recently spoke out against countless powerful Hollywood figures in a podcast with Shannon Sharp, and they are not happy. What makes Cat's expose so dangerous is that tens of millions of people around the world believe he is telling the truth. This man yeah. is speaking against the evils of this world. Thank you, Cat Williams. This generation is hungry for the truth. Thank you, Cat, for speaking your truth. We, yo, uh, no, I, I, I don't uh, agree with that. Your truth type thing, but um. The reason why uh, people people believe it's true, like believe that everything that he says is true, is because of some of the stuff that have come out to be true. Yes. So if some of the stuff are verified to be true, or some of the people that he's talking about are verified to be shady, yes, it's going to like all of what he's saying is true. So I don't believe anyone. Like, I, I'm skeptical, I'm paranoid, I, I, I take what everyone else says as, yeah, they're coming to me with um, true and genuine intent to not deceive me, but knowing that um, people cannot be trusted at face value, employ uh, a certain level of, con uh, of caution when it comes to just believing people willy-nilly, no matter who they are, because people can ask, why would someone lie? and uh, yeah, to deceive, to protect themselves because they feel threatened, yeah, to gain an advantage, something like that. But I'm not saying that he did that. It's just a general rule of thumb that I go by. He absolutely believe you. They canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. Now, a lot of what Kat said in this podcast Damn. cannot be proven true or false, but because he is funny, a good storyteller, and most importantly, confident with his words, this allowed him to convince millions that he's telling the truth. Plus, we all know that celebrities don't often speak their true thoughts on the industry or politics out of fear of being canceled. However, yeah. some things he said are just straight up. Canceled is the least of his worries. I'm telling you, canceled is putting it lightly. But let's let's speed this up a little bit because um, I might talk a lot and that might in like um increase the length of uh, the, the reaction lies i'm probably reading three thousand books a year no from the time that i'm eight years old to the time that i'm 12. my next project was to read like that like that um that's that, that i don't i don't believe that the 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 timing you you've got to be doing nothing but reading books and i'm not gonna try and work out the math the whole encyclopedia set so when you're like six seven years old you read the whole encyclopedia set you think you're one of the smartest people in the world so apparently cat read the entire encyclopedia and read eight non-fiction books every single day from age eight to age 12. Yeah. this is impossible and it's a lie throughout this entire yeah. podcast cat slipped in bold-faced lies which massively contradicts his preaches of spreading the truth nobody knows why liars lie and that's why i had to come on the program cat exists in this middle ground where nobody can really determine if he is telling the truth if he is lying if he's telling a joke, if he's on drugs, if he has a mental illness, or if he is clearly exposing the dark and sinister nature of Hollywood. So today, yeah. I am going to give you as much context as possible so you can make that decision for yourself. Starting yeah. with his earliest introduction to Hollywood on the Yeah, a pimp named Slipback. This is the original right here. Yo, this is freaking iconic right here. This right here, yo, defined, yo, <laughs> yo. The, the recent meme that has made a resurgence. They find a character that was on an iconic show, The Boondocks. I'm telling you, 
Yeah. Set of his very first movie, Friday After Next, where Cat played the role of Money Mike, but in the script, Cat alleged that Money Mike was originally supposed to be violently assaulted. The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, the problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. And if you would allow true. me 100%. to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny. Ice Cube, who yeah. wrote, produced, and acted in the film, denied these allegations. The second thing I want to clear up, it was never, I would never shoot a scene uh, in a movie, especially like Friday. Um, where you actually see this happening on camera. That ain't my style. If you check out any of my movies, they not raunchy. But it's because Kat said things like this throughout his interview caused fans to cast doubt on anyone who denied his claims. These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. You know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Cat believes he has a more legitimate yeah, and honorable yeah. legacy than the other comedians he has been associated with throughout his career. These men, Cat says, have formed a gang in Hollywood that actively steal and or blackball young entertainers' careers, which drives them into madness. For 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that, listen, they got a gang on that side. They know what it is. They know who the gang is. All of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets. And this is the age of truth. And, and, and the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies. Cat only mentions three of these group members by name, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Ricky Smiley. But you will notice throughout the video, he makes bold accusations about many other massive stars like Kevin Hart and Martin Lawrence. Are they also a part of the gang? Well, that's yeah. up for you to decide. Yeah. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife. That light skin, weird face wife. <laughs> Okay, let me let me let me see if any of these fit my preference. I think only Mike Epps and uh, I think um, Kevin Hart's Michael Blackson. Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Only only those only those kind of fit my my preference as in facial appearance of what I would like. But that probably probably has been enhanced with uh, makeup, you know. So yeah, I need to see them without that. That never do an interview. Oh, Anyways, let's start with Kat's claims that Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey stole his material. But first, I'm gonna steal your attention for just a minute to tell you about today's sponsor. Have you ever Googled your name and seen yourself on one? Yeah. Remember, privacy is is a very important thing, and you should do your utmost to protect your privacy. But let's move on. Thanks, Aura. Cat claims that both Steve Harvey and Cedric the Entertainer have stolen jokes from him. Cedric did it first on the original Kings of Comedy tour in 2000, which at the time was the highest grossing comedy tour in history. Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Bernie Mac playing sold out arenas from coast to coast. The tour grossed over $18 million in its first year. In 1999, both Seagram Americas and HBO sponsored the tour. DL Hewley was added and the two year gross exceeded $37 million. And at the exact same time of this tour, Cat was just starting to make a name for himself in Hollywood. He thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. This is the joke that Kat is referring to, which was originally performed in 1998 on BET's Comic View program. Yo, um, we've already heard this uh, and uh, a lot of people try to try to um, compare the evidence. So, yeah. You never had your car radio up so loud that you couldn't hear the damn thing when it cut off. It looked like this. You flossing in a six shift converter. Using physical comedy, Cat mimics someone trying to assess why their car just broke down while the music is blasting. The alleged theft came from Cedric the Entertainer two years later on the original Kings of Comedy tour, which was in 2000. The premise of Cedric's joke was that white people are obsessed with the moon and space. He says black people are not, but if they gotta go to space, then they would drive the spaceship like this. We drive a space shuttle like it's a 72 deuce and a quarter, nigga. We, we, we get us a cigarette, nigga. We, get us, we be in a space shuttle, nigga, like it's a 72 deuce, nigga. We get us a 
Now when you consider the music cue, which is not very common in stand-up comedy, that already looks suspicious. Then the side-by-side -side comparison indicates Cedric makes very similar physical movements that Cat did. Cedric says he did not steal the joke, and that if Cat was so upset about it, he had 30 opportunities to speak up. Cat say you stole one of his jokes. Yeah, like I mean, it was ridiculous. You know what I mean? It was like the idea of the joke that he was even talking about don't even match up with no timeline. So for me, it was one of those things like- Did you have a conversation? Did you guys sell it? Did you have a conversation with Cat? I've seen this guy 30 times. Like, dog, if you literally was that upset about, about it. it like dog, why you, him and say, hey, yeah, why say, you say nothing like that don't even make sense but cat says that yeah. cedric apologized about stealing the joke years ago and is now lying to the public that he never stole it in the first place him and steve had already apologized for me so i gave him a pass why would you sit here and be like i talked to i saw cat 30 times why did i give you a pass if you were just gonna lie so imagine how a young yeah. cat williams felt seeing his best joke being stolen by one of the biggest comedians in the world on the largest grossing comedy tour in history he never wrote anything remember when cedric the entertainer starts he's supposed to be singing dancing and telling jokes that's why he's called the entertainer he did four comedy specials they're so bad shannon they're not available on netflix or tubi noticing the follows <laughs> yeah you see you see patrick cc came up with that with them receipts he said he put that he said false he he said that cedric the entertainer um specials were so bad they're not available on netflix yeah right here yeah debunk all the backlash, Cedric responded to Kat's comments on Instagram. Revisionist like, history. Regardless of whatever Kat's opinion, my career can't be reduced to one joke Cat Williams claims as his. Cedric added, I'm a grown ass man, and none of that shit going to go like you think. But Cedric isn't the only one that stole Kat's material. Steve Harvey's theft of Kat's jokes is arguably much worse. At the 2005 yeah. BET Comedy Awards, Steve Harvey introduced a hot upcoming comedian to the stage by the name of Cat Williams. Cat hit the stage and absolutely dominated the crowd with his joke about gas prices. Because the world is crazy right now. What is gas? $600 a damn gallon? Right now, so I don't care how much money you got. Gas is entirely too high. Used to be, if you put fifteen dollars in your tank, you had time to bond with your vehicle. You had time to put the nozzle in and set the clicker and look through your car and clean off the dashboard. Then Steve Harvey did a joke about gas prices three years later in his comedy special, Still Trippin'. Gas four dollars a gallon. Can't even pump gas like you used to no more. Four dollars a gallon. You remember when you used to go to pump and put the nozzle in there and hit it? Be sitting there talking, be on your phone. Hey, what's happening? Be walking around cleaning the windshield. It's hard to see this as anything other than blatant theft, but Cat didn't stop there. He continued to expose Steve's long history of suspicious behavior. It started yeah. with Why Bernie Mac quit the iconic Kings of Comedy tour. Do you consider yourself a king of comedy? They consider that. Oh, that After Bernie left, them same three guys I'm telling you about, the kings, yeah. they came to me. I was supposed to be the fourth king. I got the offer, then what happened? but I turned it down. Why? Because you shit on Bernie, and I know the truth. You think I'm gonna let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? You. Now there has been an infamous Yo. beef between Steve Harvey and the late Bernie. Yo, <laughs> yes. Yo, one thing I I can say about what from from what cat, he has his own um compass for what's right and wrong and how you treat people. And if you if he sees you treating someone that does not deserve that type of treatment, in his eyes he's going to he's he's going to say that to your face, and he's not gonna be polite about it and it's funny to watch so it's entertaining so that's why i like a mac that fans have known about for years there were often arguments between the four comedians of who should be the closer or finale of the tour since bernie was a much funnier comedian steve would get booed by the crowd when he performed after bernie why because the whole time bernie was here you was acting like you was funnier than him the reason you was supposed to go last is because it was your tour tell the truth it was steve's tour not it was gonna be called the king's comedy it was steve's tour these are the guys opening for him of course you gotta close if it's your tour. Harvey eventually just ended up being the host of the tour and not performing a full stand-up routine because he just couldn't make the audience laugh as hard as Bernie. D.L. Hewley, who was also on the tour, even said that Steve never thought Bernie would become successful and when he started getting more opportunities, he became jealous. You feel that the beef between Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey was because Steve Harvey was getting a lot of network love during the time and Bernie Mac not so much? Yeah, and then Bernie started to get it. So yeah, I think that, you know, Steve at one point was you know, uber successful, and then Bernie started to, cause he didn't ever think he would get the opportunity he got, but once he did, America loved him, like we all kinda knew they would, and he decided to go a different way. Eventually, Bernie got sick yeah. of Steve hating, realized his worth, and exited the tour, which ended up forcing all four guys to split up. We split up. You wish you would've stayed, kept it together, could've kept it together we, a couple we, we tried everything, but, you know, dudes, felt like they was movie stars. I never saw myself as a movie star. Steve basically claims that Bernie went Hollywood and acted too good for the guys, and Cat no, didn't my. like that. <laughs> Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? 
you called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? Yo. Allegedly, Steve even called the producers for the heist comedy film Ocean's Eleven to steal the role of Frank Catton from Bernie Mac. Ocean's Eleven featured a star-studded cast, including George Clooney, Matt Damon, Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts, and Casey Affleck, among others. The film became a huge critical and commercial success, earning over yeah. $450 million at the worldwide box office. Having a substantial role in a film of this magnitude helped the rising trajectory of Bernie Mac's career. An infamous GQ article from 2003 released when Bernie Mac himself claimed that Steve was jealous of him from the very beginning. Overall, Cat is obviously <laughs> upset about Steve stealing material, but ironically, he was more upset that Harvey tried to lie and claim that Bernie went Hollywood on the Kings of Comedy, when in reality, Steve was so jealous of his success that Bernie couldn't take it anymore and quit. And now that he gone, you going to act like, he wanted to be a movie star. You stop it. You stop it. That man was funnier than all of y'all, and y'all thought y'all had one over on him. The yeah. king is the funniest. Period. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. And that's why no audience member was ever swayed. It didn't matter where Bernie went. You think if Bernie went first, he wasn't the king? <laughs> Get out of here. But Cat Williams and Steve Harvey's beef did not stop there. A few years later in 2008, a show promoter booked Steve Harvey and Cat Williams to co-headline a New Year's Eve stadium show in Yo. Detroit. Cat entered his villain arc and challenged Steve to a comedy battle on the Jamie Foxx radio show. Yo, people, booking two, uh, uh, two comedy artists. <laughs> Yo. Booking two comedians on the same show is crazy. Wild. When they obviously have tension with each other. No. To which Steve accepted. You have been the king of comedy as long as we've had one. The second that you get off stage, I need you to understand that that's your final time <laughs> as the king of comedy. I hope you got a team of writers. You're going to need about six or seven of them. You can yeah. bring the nation. You can bring Rashawn McDonald. You can bring everybody who listens to your radio show. <laughs> They're going to see the truth. And it's name. It's Cat Williams. Yeah. <laughs> what was supposed to be just a comedy show is now some sort of 1v1 battle dubbed the Championship of Comedy. And Steve responded with this. I'm not saying he's in trouble, but I'm saying this right here, Jamie. A dog don't bark at park cars. Basically, Steve's analogy was that he shouldn't respond to Cat Williams because he is too famous and successful. So on New Year's Eve, Steve got on the stage and never addressed or made fun of Cat. That was a big mistake. Yeah. <laughs> and that yo 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 when pettiness works out in your favor bro when pe <laughs> but for real this is like that, that you thinking that you're too big to to address a situation with a person and then the people sided with that person when they went in on you. Yeah. You played yourself. Cat <laughs> absolutely embarrassed Steve. He claims this was the end of Harvey's career. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he had seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand-up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand-up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand-Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and yeah. lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And Yo. I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand-up anymore. Now, Cat isn't very accurate here. <laughs> Steve had multiple successful arena comedy tours yeah. after the championship battle and steve was already bald by 2008 so cat didn't really expose him for having fake hair but yeah yeah for real but well, yes he going in he, he because he got like one instance that he can use to justify like the outlandish claims that he making it's kind of it kind of works in convincing people to, to believe that everything every word that he says is true 
which is not. It's very verifiably not not. But that doesn't mean that he's he, he, the greatest liars. They mix, they sprinkle truth within the, the lies, or they speak more truth than they do speak lies, so that people won't ever question what they say. But doesn't that just mean that they're a, okay? Yeah. But is it a coincidence that almost immediately after Cat got on that stage and exposed his biggest hater in the industry, he started his crazy downward spiral? In November of 2008, Williams missed an appearance on Conan O'Brien and was later arrested that evening when officers found three handguns in his car while exiting rapper Jim Jones' studio in New York. That same month, he checked into the Mount Vernon Inn in Sumter, South Carolina. Shortly after checking in, employees reportedly found Williams stumbling around wearing just a bathrobe and a towel wrapped around his head. When police arrived, Williams asked them for directions to the nearest hospital. There, his family family convinced him to seek psychiatric help, to which he was eventually hospitalized. He just said that he doesn't trust anyone anymore, that everyone has turned against him. He wasn't really coherent. Pretty much after this, Cat wasn't seen again until 2011. No stand-up performances, no movies, no TV. The only time he was talked about was when he was arrested. In November of 2010, authorities arrested Cat in Coata County, Georgia, after he allegedly stole $3,500 worth of coins and jewelry. Things escalated in June of 2011 when he was arrested in connection with an alleged assault on a tractor driver. He supposedly Yo, dog, yo, don't stop bringing up, yo, stop do, doing this stuff, bro. I know when you bring up information like this, when it starts to create a, a little trail that points in a certain direction, yeah, it kind of, it kind of seems like, yes, it was all uh, um, intentional by some design of someone. But this is some of the stuff that I know makes me paranoid <laughs> I'm telling you it makes it, it contributes to my paranoid behavior and uh, feeds my paranoia you know because there are things that i have experienced in my life that cannot be proven but you can't tell me that they did not happen because i was the one that observed it it could have been psychos it could have been uh hallucinations hallucinations but that was too real and it had real impacts on me that i could verify but if I said that to someone else, they would look at me like I'm crazy and lock me up. <laughs> supposedly conspired with three women who attacked the man in his tractor. In 2012, Williams returned to the comedy world with his third HBO comedy special, Catpocalypse. Unfortunately, with the spotlight back on him, Cat fell back into a dangerous cycle as the bizarre behavior continued. In October of 2012, Cat and comedian Faison Love got into a heated argument outside of a Hollywood club over a $50,000 debt that Cat owed Love. During the argument, Cat uh -huh. proceeded to pull a gun on Love. That wasn't loaded. On November 9th, his former assistant, Melissa Shag, claimed that he went into a rage and attacked her the month prior. Then police arrested Cat in Oakland, California on on charges of suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon after he'd allegedly beaten an 18-year-old with a bottle. On November 16th Yo. at the Oracle Arena in California, Cat took the stage while having a total public meltdown. For 15 minutes, he seemed to be under the influence, rambling about nothing while taunting members of the audience. Then the audience began booing him. On November 17th, 2012, Williams got involved in a police chase while driving his three-wheeled motorcycle and failing to stop. Just a week later, Cat was arrested in Seattle, Washington after he allegedly got into a dispute at a bar in the South Lake Union neighborhood. His arrest came after he missed the first night of a planned two-night performance at the Paramount Theater. That same month, he slapped a Target employee in Sacramento for no apparent reason, which was made fun of on late-night television shows like Conan O'Brien. On December 28th, Williams was- Yo, yo, for no apparent reason. They were talking, but yes, yeah, um, I don't know what, I don't know what went down. It could have said something off, uh, uh, yeah, crazy, but no matter what someone says, don't put your hands on them. I know that a lot of people don't have that type of self-control. Yeah, and worse, if you're unstable mentally, yes, it's even worse. So I'm not making any excuses for him. Yes, you get consequences if you, if you assault someone and you should face them. Yeah.
who was placed in handcuffs once again on child endangerment charges. Oh, man, can you cool, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm cool to the man. They took my children from me. Yeah, I mean, how I was, terrible is that? Cat's criminal history does not even come close to stopping here, but I'm sure you all get the point. He was spiraling hard for years, seemingly strung out on drugs or at least experiencing manic episodes. The media called him crazy, a crackhead, and didn't believe anything he was saying since they wrote him off as a madman, but he says he was never under the influence. I am never under the influence of anything. I'm always in my right mind. I'm always a physical specimen. And when you see me, I'm much, much bigger than you had thought. I have far less play in me than you would like. There seems to be a pattern no. with comedians <laughs> in the downward spiral. In 1990, Richard Pryor, who struggled with addictions to women and hard drugs, poured high-proof yeah. rum on himself and set himself on fire. His widow, Jennifer Lee Pryor, claimed it was a drug-induced attempt at ending everything. In 1997, Martin Lawrence was coming off the end of his hit sitcom, Martin, as well as starring in the blockbuster film, Bad Boys. That year, Lawrence allegedly had a meltdown in Los Angeles where he ran into Ventura Boulevard with a gun and threatened tourists and random people. Sources claimed Martin began taking psychotropic drugs and having violent outbursts on the set of his movie, a thing Yo, and yo, if you ask Cat, that, that that might have been his like, his uh, his um humiliation type of it it year situation, you know. Thin line between love and hate. Martin would continue his erratic behavior, getting arrested for gun possession and later going to rehab. Robin Williams openly spoke about his lifelong battle with addiction, alcoholism, and depression. Comedian Mark Maron has spoken publicly about having severe depression. Artie Lang and Jim Norton as well. John Belushi, Chris Farley, and Greg Giraldo all died of drug overdoses. It's unclear why comedians seem to struggle with mental health more than others in the entertainment industry while being tasked with creating the most lighthearted content. Deborah Sarani, a clinical psychologist who treats performers with depression and other mental health problems, said comedians often wear what we call the mask of depression. Which which helps them put on a more acceptable face to the world. But behind that mask, there is a terrible struggle going on. There is a stigma about depression, and oftentimes the laughter distracts from feelings of weakness. Cat Williams yeah. has had an extremely rough life, starting with being homeless and alone at age 13. Combine that with the chaotic lifestyle of a comedian, constantly being on the road, late nights, irregular sleeping and eating schedules, the pressure to constantly deliver funny and engaging performances, as well as regularly dealing with hecklers and sometimes unresponsive audiences who make the job mentally taxing. And on top of yeah. all of that, add the potentially evil Hollywood gang that Cat says is actively trying to get him to compromise his morals, but when he refuses, they blackball him and run smear campaigns to call him crazy? That is a recipe that would make any man go mad. So the question is... Yes, for real, for real. Um, I know that, Patrick, some people might say you're trying to paint him in a positive light so that people don't feel too bad for his situation, but yes, anyone put in that situation would possibly go crazy. And don't pretend like, yeah, there isn't some Suspicious stuff happening once people have enough money, they're untouchable. It's just a fact of life, and you do not know who wants to exact influence over your life because you cannot do nothing and because they got connection. People so rich you don't know about them, you know? But right now, um, that's just... <laughs> let me not scare you guys, you know? But cause I don't know, I don't know nothing. I don't know anything, you know? Was Cat trying to escape an evil industry or was he actually a drug-induced madman? Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Cat, when I come back, I need you. You're my young partner, you're my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. Go do what you gotta do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip, I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know, we get in that office and this fool pull out Big Mama's house too, where this nigga want me to get in a dress with him. And I'm literally saying to everybody, why is he in a dress again? If it isn't yeah. obvious, Cat <laughs> didn't want to wear the dress. Brandon yeah. D. Jackson would go on to portray Martin's son, Trent, in Big Mama's house, where the two go undercover at an all-girls performing arts school. Unfortunately, yeah. years later, Jackson asserted that he did the project for money and was unaware of the repercussions it would have on his career. Did you get like slack when you wore the dress at that moment? Only Cat Williams. Cat Williams was trying to always say, Brandon, Brandon, don't wear a dress. <laughs> you know, he, he called you or is this? No, he was saying in the media, so I thought he was heckling me. He was really trying to help me at the time. I didn't know that. I was immature. Right. I felt like, dang, why? I'm trying to, just trying to make it. And then he was trying to warn me, you know, don't get in the dress. Everything went wrong. He's like, everything went right. Everything went wrong when I put on that dress. Cat has been discussing the subject for years because this has been a pattern that many have speculated is a humiliation ritual. Eddie Murphy, Tyler Perry, Jamie Foxx, Wesley Snipes, Chris Tucker, Arsenio Hall, Tracy Morgan, the Waynes brothers have all dressed up as women for TV or movie roles. Just before Kevin Hart exploded into fame, he also wore a dress on Saturday Night Live. And even 10 years ago, Cat discussed this. It is that is dirty. That is so disgusting. <laughs> Yo, I get being a naive kid when running around the house 
get in your in your mom's stuff but consciously as an adult properly functioning human being you make the conscious decision to do that compromise whatever values you said you might have had for money and as i said i made a point earlier about people that got money that you don't even know them people compromising their morals and their boundaries their values whatever they stand on whatever they stand for for money and uh, that's why that's where um a lot of people think that they can control what i do because um i've been in situations like not not like these public situations but private situations where a situation is not working out for me anymore so i decide to dismiss myself or remove myself from that situation because i have decided that for my mental and physical well-being that situation does not work out for me anymore i will be moving on they tend to try and offer money like they can buy me so i just re reassert my points and um told them that i have decided to remove myself from the situation two answers first of all let's be very very clear it is possible that there isn't anything funnier than a guy in a dress and if that's the case then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress okay well kevin doesn't yeah. have to worry about what people are gonna say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him so now yeah. some of us are against the illuminati and we are against the illuminati at our own detriment when people are against the illuminati then they get punched in the face all the time the press hates them and nobody likes them Kat also detailed yeah. an Illuminati meeting alongside Ludacris. There was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be Ludacris and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. It's really hard to back up any of Kat's claims. And even if the stipulation of getting a $200 million deal is that you have to shave your head and sideburns, that seems like an extremely small compromise. And there are no indications that Ludacris ever sold his soul. I mean, he will tell you, he responded to Kat with a rap song. Never been Illuminati, only Illuminati, and I only left with bitches when coming from any party. Afro with the sideburns, yeah, that's my signature. Addictions on the rise, comedians check your temperature. Perhaps yeah. the most overlooked comment during the interview was Kat's take on Kanye West. I suspect that we're pretty awful people if we say that somebody got a mental illness and then we watch what they do. If you say somebody got special needs, then why would you be watching them and holding them accountable like everybody else? The question Yes, that, yo, whenever he starts to freaking make sense like that, whenever he starts to make sense like that, whenever they say that Kanye is crazy and you see him, um, because crazy people, cannot be held accountable for their action. Whenever they say Kanye is crazy and uh, they let him continue to move how he moves. And uh, when he does something that they, dece they deem that he did because he was crazy and hold him accountable for what he did because he is crazy. Didn't you say that crazy people can't be held accountable because they, they're not able to understand that they are being punished for something that they should not be doing. But whenever people make sense like that, it just, yo, it just clicks and people realize that, yo, something's up. The question of whether someone's actions should be judged differently due to mental illness is complex and multifaceted, and opinions may vary depending on cultural, ethical, and legal perspectives. Mental yeah. illness can significantly impact an individual's ability to understand the consequences of their actions, to make rational decisions, or to control their behavior. Kat is not excusing Kanye's behavior, and he definitely says he doesn't agree with what he says, but he's just questioning why people are surprised as his whole career he gave obvious signs, such as claiming that he was a god, and he was praised and uplifted for his outlandish behavior. Now, Kat has never publicly disclosed any sort of manic or psychiatric problem Problems, but look at how much the world judged him when he was crazy 10 years ago. Versus now, he is saying the exact same things he was saying while he was crazy, but today he is more calm, coherent, and of course, entertaining. Now they are quoting his words as prophetic statements of a wise old genius. Funny how things change. Yo, yo, yeah, it's funny how things change, but it's, yo, I wonder why, um, um, like, Patrick didn't include any of the, any of the, uh, 
the, the statements that he made on, on the Diddy situation because that that shit came that shit looked like it came true, bro. <laughs> well, yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the reaction and hopefully you uh, earned your subscription. You know. Well, I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, it's full. Peace out with Techie Mas. Let's get this. Let's get it.